So as you may know if you've seen my videos before, I use LF as my terminal file manager. And one of the problems with LF is it doesn't come with a preview or script by default. You have to write it all by yourself. So today we're going to be taking a look at a program called Pistol, which provides you with a fairly good baseline to work from. It does a lot of file previews for you, but if you want to customize it, then you can do that as well. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding a little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's all the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for Pistol right here. So it's not just made for LF, it's also made for Ranger to make the scope.shar file just completely redundant. So the problem the developer has with the scope.shar file is that he doesn't really like how it handles the different files that are available. So it handles it with a case statement. Whereas with this, it's just using the MIME file type select thing. So Instead of having to go through this massive case statement, it'll just select the MIME type and then you can do a preview from that. I don't know which is quicker to be honest, but I don't know, it'll really depend on what you're doing. I haven't really noticed any performance improvement, so I don't really think that's a very good argument. Maybe on a really slow system there is an improvement, but on my system I've had no problem working with a case statement to do all of my file previews. But the other idea for this is that if you just don't have a file preview for something like LF, then you could just use this as a good baseline and then customize it as you want it to work. I'm not a big fan of this because it does handle it with MIME types. The problem with that I'll show you a bit later, but for now we'll just work with it as it is. So right now with the default settings, what it does is it will use the Go Chroma package to actually do file highlighting on just general text files. And then it will use Archiver to actually read out for just archived stuff. I don't have an archive available, but that'd be things like zip files, tar files, tar gz, tar whatever, bzip2. I might download like ST or something and then just show you what it looks like. I'll do that off camera, obviously. But let's have a look through here. So by default, if it doesn't know how to actually identify something, what it's going to do is just print out information about what that file is. So it'll be things like the file size, the name of it. You can see right here some of the sort of stuff that it will show. So this is for a executable. So that would be a Windows program, I think. No, no, it's just for an, oh, it's actually for a, a Linux program. But I, I'm guessing if you did put like a Windows XE file on there, it probably would do something very similar to this. Yeah, this is actually a for a Linux program. So we'll look at what it actually does in just a moment, but if we want to actually customize, it's very simple. Actually before that, how to install it. So I don't believe there's an AUR package for it just yet, which is a little annoying. And I don't know if there are packages on any systems. Let's see, is there anything in the wiki about any systems? Because I just installed it through Go. Okay, no, there is an AUR package. I just couldn't see it last time, I guess. I must have missed that. So you can install it through the AUR, that's one option. Or if you're on a system besides Arch, then you're gonna have to install it with Go. So just run this command, and then to actually run it, you're gonna have to write, unless you have the Go path within your path variable, you have to write out the directory to where you're storing your Go files, slash bin, slash pistol. I would recommend just adding that into your path variable. It's not too difficult, so I'm not gonna show you in this video. So this is actually a very, very simple program to use. So we can actually just test it from the terminal. We don't have to use it as a previewer. So let's open that up. Let's say we want to preview, I don't know, just some random file in here. Uh, my, yeah, this angular.json file. So I think I've just got it set up with the default config right now. So it doesn't know how to actually highlight JSON data. So it'll just say JSON data. But the main reason I'm even remotely interested in this is if I show you something like my bash RC, for example. So as we can see in here, it'll actually highlight it. I've noticed that a lot of highlighting programs don't even touch your bash RC or any of the hidden files, which is really annoying. So I don't think I've got it set as my preview right now, but let's actually look at how we would go about doing that. So if we go into my LS config, that's the wrong folder, the LF config, not LS. So in the LF config into my LFRC. So let's actually swap it over and then we can see what it's actually doing. So what you wanna add is this line right here. So set previewer pistol. 
So if you're using Ranger, then you want to use this command right here. So set preview a script and then put the path to where pistol is. Obviously, as I said, I have it in my path variable, so I don't need to explicitly put the entire path there. But if you don't, then you're going to have to. So let's actually just see what it looks like with my current config. I believe it's basically the default config right now, so it shouldn't be too far off what it actually looks like. So it doesn't do anything special on folders, obviously, because then you wouldn't be able to navigate in them. The JSON data it just says JSON data. And as we can see, it'll highlight a lot of the files. So yeah, and it'll highlight my Git config as well. And as I don't think it does the ZSHRC, which is annoying. It does my VimRC though. And where's the SHRC? No, it does that one. It doesn't do the Z profile. So yeah, pretty much that's what that does. If we go into my uh, wallpapers folder. Okay, so this is what it does when you just have it set up with the default config. So it doesn't show you obviously an image preview because LF doesn't support image previews right now. And also the developers of this have said they don't really want to do in image previews either, which I think is really annoying. So what it'll do is it'll just give you some information about the JPEG. So it's a JPEG, it's with this standard, it's got this resolution. Let's go look at what PNGs do. Uh, what PNGs do. Then it'll just show some other stuff. We jump over to some videos and maybe for MP4s it'll show something, but for MKVs it just says it's Matroshka data, which is a little annoying. So what do we do if we actually want this to show a bit more than basically nothing? So if we go over to here, it'll actually show us how we do configuration. So it's very simple. So the way this works is we'll jump into the pistol.conf. So if I can spell pistol correctly. So this folder won't be created by default, at least when you're using the Go version of building it. Maybe if you install it from the AUR, it'll automatically create this folder for you. But if it doesn't, just create this folder called pistol and then in here make a file called pistol.conf. So there's nothing too special about this file. So what we have to do in here is we have to actually put out the MIME types, then the command that we want to run on that. And that's basically just going to work like that. So if you've never worked with MIME types before, you might be wondering how you actually find out what these different MIME types are. So we use a program for this called File. You probably have it installed on your system. If you don't, it's available on basically every distro. Just look up how to find it on your specific distro. So what we have to do with this is we use the uh, MIME dash type option, and then we can just run this on any single file. So let's run it on, I don't know, this doing.rc file, for example. and We'll get back to why text slash plain is a bit of an issue occasionally, but this will work on basically any file. So we can also run that on that JSON file we have. So I think that was called Angular config. Yeah. So we run that and we can see that this is application slash JSON. So yeah, we can just run this on basically any type. So we don't also have to fully specify the type. We can also use a regex. So if we look in here, I'm using image slash asterisk and I'm running media info and then video slash asterisk and I'm also running media info. I could probably combine those. I'm not sure if you can actually combine them fully like that. I don't know if it's a full regex or if it just... No, it looks like it might be a full regex. So I actually could combine those two together into one line. I'm not going to do that right now. You can look into how regexes work, but this is basically how you configure it. So I did mention there was a bit of a problem with using MIME types. And that's because there is a lot of different types of data that can be stored in plain text. So the problem that we have here is let's say we have, say, I don't know, LaTeX isn't a good example, but we have Markdown and we just have general plain text. So we can't actually distinguish between those two with a MIME type because the way you distinguish between them is through the file extension. So that's what I'm using in my preview script. So if I wanted to do something like, let's say have text slash plain, and I don't know, we don't want to do anything on that. So let's say we just want to cat that. So yeah, we just want to do that. Let's say that's what we want to do. So what if we also then wanted to do something on markdown files? So we can't then do something like text slash markdown because markdown isn't actually a MIME type. And this is my main problem with using this program basically and why I prefer using my version where I use file extensions instead. Obviously file extensions have all their own problems. If you're missing a file extension, then 
it's just going to break anyway, even though a MIME type will still work without the file extension, but that's just a bit of a problem I have to deal with. So let's actually have a look at what this does with these slight changes that I've got. So let's just jump into a new terminal. We go LF. I think I've got a PDF file in my documents, maybe. So we've got this one right here. So this will just basically turn any PDF file into a text file. Obviously, it's not going to have good formatting or anything like that, but it works well enough, pretty much. And I also had some stuff for videos. So if we highlight over one of these, it shows us far more data like this. Obviously, it's not going to do a preview, but I think that this is better than just saying, oh, it's Matroshka data, for example. Or we can go over to my wallpapers folder, and this will show far more information as well. Because I'm using media info, it shows very similar sorts of info, but it's still far more than what was there before. I prefer this, so yeah, that's basically how I do it. Now, I did mention that I have my own preview script. So I'll show you what that looks like briefly. I might do a separate video on this as well at some point, but basically what this looks like is a bit like this. So I'm using a case statement, and then with the case statement, I'm just going through the different file types that are available. Obviously, it's not going to be as quick, but as I said, I've basically noticed no problem. If you're using something like an older ThinkPad, there might be a problem there, but on any newer device, it's really not going to matter. So this is the example I had where I mentioned that I wanted to do something special on Markdown files. So I did a separate video on the program Glow, which will do special formatting on Markdown files where it will actually like highlight stuff and it will use bolds and italics and things like that. And you just can't do that when you're using MIME types. So I've got Markdown handling, but I'm also using Pistol for one thing, and that's just for the highlighting for my like ZSH files, my bash files, and my GIP files. I just haven't found anything else that will properly highlight them. I know, before someone mentions it, I know that bat is a thing. I don't really like the themes for it, and I don't really feel like making a theme for it. I probably should. That would probably just make me get rid of Pistol altogether. But for now, this is good enough. And then, obviously, at the end, for anything that isn't held by any of these statements right here, I then just, by default, handle it with highlight. And that usually works well enough. I haven't run into anything thus far. I haven't been able to actually preview. Obviously, there's way more file types than what I've got here, but I haven't run into anything on my system personally where I actually need those previews. So I don't need everything that's in the scope.sha because I'm never going to run into, like, I don't know, .pk files. I, I don't know if that's a file type or anything, but my point is that... There's no point covering everything if you know you're never going to have it on your system. You might as well just build it up slowly as you actually run into those file types. So I prefer using my preview script over Pistol, but if you don't have one, or if you don't like the scope.sha, or if you don't have situations where you want to do two things on one MIME type, then this is probably a fairly good way to do it. I would recommend using Pistol for any of those situations. If you want anything else, though, it's going to be easier just to write your own preview script. It's really not difficult. This took me like five minutes to write. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Down below, I've got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, that's the best place to go for that. I'm in there most days, so feel free to just send me a message or anything. I've also now got a Telegram, so that's pretty much just being used the same way as my Twitter and my Mastodon. Nothing too special there. I've got a... I should probably just condense this. I'm getting way too much stuff now. I've got a library, so if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. There's lots of content over there. It's just all my YouTube content. Nothing special there. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. Just go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, my support links. Down below, I've got some support links. It's like five or six different ways. Feel free to use any of them or don't if you don't want to. But any help will be really appreciated. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. So I'm out.